December 9, 2013. We're looking stereo ahead, guys. You're looking ice on the last few days. This goes up to the 5th. And I had a question about this. This was not a small coming. It's a lens flare as Venus came in close to the camera on the right. You see that? Now, is this gaseous ball on the left that we're not supposed to look at, is it developed this bow shock on the 5th? They ran it for another 30 minutes. We get these images about one every half hour. Notice it will go to 1920. After this, 10, uh, 20 is 8 o'clock p.m. After this, they cut out 12 hours of frames, guys. For 12 hours, the camera, they cut that entire day out after that bow shot. Now, actually, the, here we're looking at the Earth and Mercury coming around the sun. That's the Pleiades star system, and you can actually see the imprint if you look very closely on the left. But my point here is size and distance. We're looking at the Earth. The moon is going around the Earth, and you can't see it, guys. Look at it. The moon is 2,100 miles wide. You can't see it. How would you see some debris from a meteorite shower? The Earth is going through three now, the Geminis, the Andromedids, and the new, what I call a Pisces. They're talking about calling the Werdemann Comet uh, meteor trail. So right now we're going through three meteor showers. There were 30 reports, large fireballs last night from the Canadian Meteor Report Center. Now, so you can't, you're not going to be able to see any of this debris until it hits the Earth's atmosphere. Now, this is the remains of Comet Phaethon. This is the Gemini parent object. Look at that. You got to have a close-up to see it, but you can see it. The objects inside the Ison meteor storm, which I call now I call the Isonids. I'm going to go ahead and name it that. I don't care what NASA calls it. It's the Isonids. They're bigger than this. Now watch this. As I release this film, just watch, watch the size of this object. Again, this is the, what was left of the comet Phaethon. See that? That's the parent object of the Geminids. It's, it's big, man. You, that is huge. It's bigger than the, that piece is bigger than they ever said Ison was. And here's Ison coming in. These are earlier images. This is black and white. Very good detail. Look at the density of that storm. Now, if you remember, guys, last night I did a video. I said we may get to a glimpse of Ison if it gets close enough to Lovejoy because Lovejoy is so bright. Now, look at these images that came in from last night, guys. This is Lovejoy. They had almost a complete disconnect as something pierced through that tail. You see that V formation there? If you have a comet lose its tail, it doesn't blow forward like that and curve back around. That stuff is moving at 2 million miles per day. It doesn't loop back around like that. Ison sliced through this tail. Remember I told you it was a couple of days ahead and they were both going to come 0.627 AU from the Earth? Well, because of that, now you can forget the ISON models because this thing ionized it as it went through. In other words, ISON still has a small amount of charge simply like friction. If you slide across a carpet and touch your stereo, you ever been shocked? Just friction will build up electricity moving through the atmosphere. Here's where once it slides through, it killed the energy from the main comet, and we had a disconnect. Look at these close-up images of it. I knew it would be close. I didn't know it would be this close. What does that mean? That means that we have no idea now where the projectiles from the isonids are going. Both are going fast. One's going up, one's coming sideways, just as in the angles I have these two pictures for comparison. Now, different astronomers are also reporting this disconnect. They're not saying what happened. There was not a solar flare going through that part at that time. I've seen that happen. That was not occurring. These are older images. This is just a little reminder, guys. You got five months of food and water. Here's the uh, sun. This is today's images. Very active. Now, they're saying that it has went ahead and completed that magnetic pole reversal. But we're getting still a lot of activity. And look at the close-ups. Guys, this Earth could sit on that little hook. You see that hook there? That's pure plasma density. It means it has density. It's not light. It's like liquid lava almost. Now, they're not showing all the flares here. You see that one going off the left. And you see ISON as it approaches Earth in the yellow dot. ISON is the pink square. Now, again, these models 
really no longer matter much except general idea. Too much has happened. But guys, you, you've got to be ready. And you, if you think about it, uh, Luke was very precise in his teachings. You look at the summer, we don't have a uh, triple configurated system yet, but we've got a lot of activity coming around the left side. Paul, uh, excuse me, Luke was very precise. He said, in an order, the sun, the moon, stars. Not backwards. That's repeated in the Bible. There's a reason for that order. Sun, moon, stars. That's why I watch them. So we need to watch the sun, guys. What, what are we going to see here as we go through this second half of the solar cycle? When you flip the poles of the sun, that's the halfway point. So we've got to watch it. Keep your heads up. Be ready. Guys, I know a lot of people are anxious for the gathering back with Jesus Christ. But to give you a false warning as far as it could happen at any moment, I can't do that. Now, we could, any of us that could die at any moment and be with our Lord, I'm not saying that. And that would be as close to the any moment doctrine that is biblical. But Paul straightened it out. You, so many preachers take uh, the gathering back from Thessalonians. you got to read the next chapter. Paul said, let me clarify this, guys. Uh, there seems to be some confusion here. He knew it would be confusion in the end times, too. He said, until you see the devil sitting on the, in the temple in Jerusalem, proclaiming to be God, putting himself above him, he said, let me make it clear, brothers and sisters, the gathering to back to Christ will not happen till you see that. My point is here is not any kind of divisive anything, okay? It's all about being aware. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you, you know that Paul's telling us in Thessalonians that gathering back will be after we see the devil, well, what if a lot of things happen and you're not prepared between now and then, guys? You know, what if something happens? Have you seen the devil yet? No, the world hasn't seen that. But we could have a meteor storm. We could have an earthquake. We could have a government shutdown, financial collapse, famine before then. Are you ready? Heads up, be safe.